Chapter Five of the Life of Benjamin Franklin. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. The Life of Benjamin Franklin by Samuel G. Goodrich. Chapter Five. Troubled by his friend Ralph, obtains employment. Ralph turns schoolmaster and begins an epic poem. Franklin teaches some of his friends to swim. Anecdote of Mr. Denham. Return to Philadelphia. Story of George Webb. Franklin quarrels with Keimer. Returns to work for him. Employed at Burlington. Leaves Keimer. His friend Ralph had accompanied Franklin to London, and they were now inseparable companions. They took lodgings together at three shillings and sixpence a week. Ralph appears to have been a conceited and helpless character, and made several attempts to get in the way of procuring a livelihood, but all his plans were unsuccessful. Franklin immediately procured employment at an extensive printing house, where he remained nearly a year. He was diligent in work, but his shiftless companion consumed a good share of his earnings. His engagements with Miss Reed he was thoughtless and heartless enough to forget, and never wrote to her but once during his absence. This conduct he afterwards considered among the greatest faults of his life. Ralph finally determined to leave London, and take a school in the country. As he was very vain and confident of rising to literary eminence, he was rather ashamed of what he was silly enough to consider a mean occupation. He accordingly changed his name, and took that of his companion, desiring him to address his letters to Mr. Franklin, schoolmaster. Ralph continued to write, and from time to time troubled his friend with long extracts from an epic poem which he was then composing, requesting his remarks and corrections. Franklin endeavored to discourage him from this undertaking, but in vain. Sheet after sheet continued to come by every post. Some difficulties at length broke out between the two friends, and Franklin was fortunately relieved of a burdensome dependent. He now began to think of laying up a little money, and in expectation of better employment, entered a still larger printing house near Lincoln's Inn Fields. His new employer was named Watts. At this place he became acquainted with a man by the name of Wygate, who had been well educated, read French and Latin, and loved reading. This man and a friend of his were desirous of learning to swim. Franklin had been an expert swimmer from his childhood, and was very fond of displaying his feats of activity in the water. He taught them to swim after twice going into the river, and they soon became quite skillful. Wygate soon became attached to Franklin, and at length proposed that they should travel all over Europe together, supporting themselves on the way by working at their trade. Franklin was inclined to this plan, but was dissuaded from it by his friend Mr. Denham, who advised him to think of returning to Philadelphia. Mr. Denham was an excellent man, and very kindly disposed toward Franklin. He had formerly been in business in Bristol, the city of England, but failing in making a settlement with his creditors, he went to America. He had obtained a discharge from all his debts by giving up all his property. By great industry and economy, he was able to acquire a large fortune in a few years. He had returned to England in the same ship with Franklin, and immediately visited his old place of business. While here, he invited all his old creditors to an entertainment. He then thanked them for the easy settlement they had favored him with, and when they expected nothing but the dinner, every man found under his plate an order on the banker for the full amount of the unpaid remainder, with interest. Mr. Denham was now about to return to Philadelphia, and proposed to take Franklin over as his clerk. He promised him, as soon as he became acquainted with mercantile business, to promote him, and finally establish him in some profitable situation. The plan pleased Franklin, for he had become heartily tired of London, and was anxious to return home. A satisfactory arrangement was made, and Franklin took leave of printing, as he thought, forever. He had thus spent about eighteen months in London, and during this time had increased his knowledge, though he had not improved his fortune. They sailed from Gravesend, near the mouth of the River Thames, on the 23rd of July, and arrived in Philadelphia early in October. Franklin here found several alterations. Keith was no longer governor, and his place had been supplied by Major Gordon. 
Miss Reed, despairing of his return, had been persuaded by her friends to marry a man by the name of Rogers, a worthless fellow, who left her and ran away to the West Indies. Mr. Denham took a store, and Franklin attended diligently to the business. Affairs were going on prosperously, when they were both taken violently ill, in the beginning of the year 1727. Mr. Denham died after a long sickness, and Franklin was again thrown upon the world. He tried for some time to obtain a situation as a merchant's clerk, but failing in this attempt, he again made an engagement with his old master, Keimer. Keimer was anxious to obtain Franklin's services, as most of his hands were ignorant and needed his instruction. Among these workmen was George Webb, who had been an Oxford scholar, and whose story was an uncommon instance of opportunities neglected and thrown away. He was about eighteen years of age. His birthplace was Gloucester, in England, where he was educated at a grammar school, and had been distinguished when they exhibited plays. From here he was sent to Oxford, where he continued about a year, but not contentedly, wishing of all things to see London and become a player. At length, receiving his quarterly allowance of fifteen guineas, instead of discharging his debts he went out of town, hid his gown in a bush, and walked to London, when here, having no friend to advise him, he fell into bad company, soon spent his guineas, found no means of being introduced among the players, grew poor, pawned his clothes, and wanted bread. Walking about the streets, very hungry and not knowing what to do, a bill was put into his hands offering immediate entertainment and encouragement to such as would bind themselves to serve in America. He went directly to sign the indentures, was put into the ship, and sailed without writing a line to his friends to tell them what had become of him. As a companion he was lively, witty, and good-natured, but idle, thoughtless, and imprudent to the last degree. After continuing a while with Keimer, Franklin found that his services became every day of less importance. At length a trifle snapped their connection. A great noise happened near the printing office. Franklin put his head out of the window to see what was the matter. Keimer, being in the street, looked up and called out to him in a loud and angry tone to mind his business. A number of neighbors who were standing by saw the insolent manner in which he was treated, and it vexed him exceedingly. An open quarrel ensued, and Franklin left the printing-house. Keimer was very desirous of persuading him to return, and, as it was for the interest of both that harmony should be restored, the quarrel was soon forgotten. A job was now obtained in New Jersey to print some paper money. Franklin contrived a copper-plate press for the purpose, the first that had been seen in the country. He also cut several ornaments and checks for the bills. To execute this job, Franklin and his employer went to Burlington. They performed it to the satisfaction of the government, and received a large compensation. During his short residence here, Franklin made many acquaintances and friends. One of them was Isaac Deacon, the surveyor-general, a shrewd, sagacious old man, who began, when young, by wheeling clay for the brickmakers. He learned to write after he was twenty-one years of age, afterwards learned surveying, and had now acquired by his industry a considerable property. What had chiefly induced Franklin to return to Keimer after his quarrel was the persuasion of a fellow workman by the name of Meredith. The father of this young man had promised to advance money to establish him in business in the ensuing spring, and he was desirous to set Franklin's skill against his own capital and form a co-partnership. The proposal was a fair one and acceptable upon both sides. A short time after their return from Burlington, the types that Meredith had ordered arrived from London. They settled with Keimer and left him, by his consent, before he knew anything about their project. End of chapter 5 Recording by Lee Smalley